the hope that he gives, that he, he wins. Like all of this, he, he wins. Eleven years ago, eleven and a half, we found out that I had breast cancer. I was nursing Audrey, and that's how we found it. Went through scans, went through a surgery. They found that it had spread to several of my lymph nodes under my arm. So I had full-blown chemo, radiation treatment. It lasted about a full year. That ended, and about three months later, I had a thyroid cancer recurrence, which was rare and surprising. So I had to have a, another surgery in my neck, and then I had a, it's called a radioactive iodine treatment, which is where they swallow a pill that is radioactive and it destroys thyroid cancer cells in your body. You know, the physical trauma that my body has gone through, the exhaustion, the, the day in, the day out pain, that's really hard. The new treatment that I'm on, there are days where I go, I think this is breaking me. I just think it is breaking me. I grieve losses. You know, I grieve the loss, the ability to sing. There's a point where only I can suffer this. There's a loneliness to it that is just all encompassing. I've struggled with, I want to be a grandma. I want to, to go to my children's weddings. I want to grow old with my friends and live life. I remember talking to my parents one time. I made a comment about them not suffering like I had. I remember my mom called me later and she said, that hurt. So look at my mom and dad. They are suffering every day with the fear that they're not gonna have a daughter. They suffer. It's just different for them. Is he enough? Is he enough? If everything is stripped away, that means my health, if everything were stripped away, is he enough? There you go. Okay. Welcome to my humble abode. This is my window seat. This is Ridley. It's a teenage guy's bedroom. Every day that he gives me is another day to live and declare the works of the Lord. And that's how I want to spend my time. He shows his goodness in, in giving us the yeses to our prayers, but he also shows his goodness in giving us the noes to our prayers, in that I don't have to have health restored to be whole, because I am whole. God is for you. And that was huge for me. And it's something I have to, like that's the piece of the gospel that I have to preach to myself every single day, that God is for me. He's for me. The should and the enough and the what do I have to do comes into play. What I have to do is rest in who he is and in his salvation. Kind of the big all-encompassing word that I often associate to all of it is hope. We have a hope that we will not disappoint. The thing about Psalm 23, where David writes, even in the valley of the shadow of death, he ends the psalm with, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And it's that, that literal follow me, like chasing after goodness and mercy are chasing after me. And I clung to that, that goodness is always coming. It might not look like it in the present, but it's always coming. Pilgrim 
was progress. You know, hopeful kept telling Christian, keep looking up, keep looking. Do you see? I couldn't have done it without the community that walked along beside me and said, keep looking, do you see? He's there. It won't disappoint us. It won't. My friend Beth, who is maid of honor in our wedding, um, my first thyroid surgery, I just, she showed up. I mean, she just showed up. She was, she lived far away and she showed up when I had my colon cancer surgery. I remember opening my eyes and there she was, you know, and months, years of meals, years. People show up with a, a load of firewood so Brian doesn't have to figure out how to get it. Knock on the door. There's my friend Jesse with a bouquet of flowers. Friend Andela who's coordinated my care. Every now and then there's a card in the mail. It's, you just need to know that you're loved. Wow. We have a good friend who's a counselor and he's counseled me a lot through this. And he was sitting with Brian and I, and I was asking that question. Is this punishment for sin in my life? He pointed to the kids, and he said, pick one. And I said, pick one what? And he said, pick one to give cancer to. And I said, oh, I would never give my child this. And he said, that is how God looks at you. Understanding the depths of his love and my desperation for relationship with him. There's a, a song I love called Jesus, King of Angels. And there's a line in it that says, With all my heart, I love you, Sovereign Lord. Tomorrow, let me love you even more. And that's what I want. I want to love him with my whole heart. And then tomorrow, love him even more. I want to appear like I have it all together. And I think I've learned I don't have to have it all together. Night, when it's dark, Satan's lies come, and I'm the only one that can wrestle with it. It's, it's God that I want. And he's the fulfillment to that moment. Is he enough? Yes. I don't even know how to tell you how I got there because of the supernatural work of the Spirit. He is enough. Oh God, I said, and that was all. But what are the prayers of the whole universe more than expansions of that one cry? It is not what God can give us, but God that we want.